TikTok a shadow ban me for this story I'm about to tell you guys, but I'm gonna take one for the team because this story is juicy. So y'all remember, I went to this predominantly white people school. No, I don't have anything against y'all white people. I love y'all. What I don't love is when people are racist, don't matter what color you are, besides the point. So this school, y'all remember I said, didn't have no security, so people would get away with doing sketchy stuff. So there was this kid in my class, and for some reason, he would always get straight A's. But this dude was never in class. I ain't Albert Einstein, but there's no way you're making straight A's when I'm busting my butt out here and getting a B. You never show up to class, so what's going on? Part two is already up. So this dude was getting straight A's and he didn't even show up to class. Huh, something ain't right here, huh? I can smell something. So I put my detective skills on and guess what happened? I noticed that every Tuesday or Thursday when he would show up to class, he was always the first one there. Now I know you are not getting to class early because you regret missing school and you trying to get here so you can learn. No, there is something going on here. And guess what? I'm going to find out. I said, oh, I'm going to be here early too. We're going to be some early birds and we're going to find out what's going on. FBI hired me today. So I pulled up to class on time, on task, and on a mission. And I see her, the teacher, the one that got her degree to teach her students, giving this student money. It looked like a couple $10 bills. Part three up now. So I see this teacher handing the student like a couple $10 bills, probably like $50, $20, something. It was still money. Since when do teachers pay their students? I know for sure she wasn't his mama, his granny, his uncle, like nothing. She was nothing. She was not related to him. Could have been her sugar baby. Ooh. When they see me coming in the class unexpectedly, they're like, you know when somebody gets caught? You know when somebody gets caught, they act all brand new, like, hi, how you doing? Didn't expect to see you so soon. I said, hmm, hmm. And guess what I saw on her desk? None other than some pills. P-I-L-S, pills. Now, I ain't no doctor yet, but I know this ain't no Tylenol, no aspirin, no nothing, boo. I knew what those were. Part four is up now. Okay, part four. I see the teacher handing money to him, and then I see some pills that look kind of, huh, sketchy on her desk. They were in a little clear baggie, if you know what I mean. So then, I was like, hold up. Mm, this don't sit with me right. I asked my friends about this dude, because they all knew him, apparently. I guess I was new to this school, so I didn't know what was going on. So I guess he was a plug for a lot of people. Huh, so I put two and two and two together. He don't show up to class. She pays him for some Tylenol. He gets straight A's, does not do any work, sleeps in class, uh, drinks a water out of his water bottle all day. She don't say nothing to him. That's how I found out my peer was a pharmacist. And he was just prescribing my teacher what she needed to get through the day. Did they ever get caught? No. I was in traffic and this guy started like yelling at me and gesturing towards me and trying to get my attention. And my only experience with men doing that in traffic at red lights are one, they're hitting on me, which is weird because I'm not listening to Cruel Summer at a red light with my window down because I'm hoping I'll meet the one in that moment. No girl is doing that, I think. And then the other reason men yell at me in traffic is because they think that I did something wrong and they feel the need to tell me about it. So either way, I'm ignoring this guy, right? I'm ignoring him so hard, but the red light wouldn't turn green. And finally, I rolled down my window and I was like, can I help you? And he said, your back brake light is out. Did you know that? And I said, oh no, thank you. Thank you so much for telling me that. And then a couple days later, my sister and I were in the drive-thru at the donut house and we're just chatting. And all of a sudden a man just appears behind her head in the window. And we, I was like, ah, and she turned around and saw him. And then she screamed too. And I rolled down the window and I said, can I help you? And he was a very, very old man. And he said, me and my wife, we're behind you and we noticed that your brake light was out and I said oh thank you sir thank you so much I had no thank you and then 
I got pulled over by a cop and he came up to the window and he said, ma'am, did you know that your back bright brake light is out? And I was like, oh, what? Really? I know. No, that no, I it's my back. I don't see my own brake light. So how would I how would I even know that? Story time. I used to work at a restaurant called On the Border. And this is going to be relevant to the story. Food is like a fake Mexican style. But for a lot of people, they really think this is Mexican food. Anyways, during this time, I was a host. So here it comes a family. And you know, I'm not trying to be like stereotypical, but... But they were white. White, white, white. Not my teeth white. They're a little bit yellow, but you know. So anyways, here I come doing my job. I go sit them down on the table. If you need anything, please let me know. Can I take your drink order while you look at the menu? First off, don't touch our menus anymore. We want to talk to a manager. We don't want you color people touching our food. What? First off, John, you do realize you came to eat Mexican people food? And for the food to be Mexican, most likely Mexican people will be cooking it. And Mexican people are colored. Two plus two equals four. If you didn't want colored people touching your food, you should have stayed in the comfort of your racist home. One time I ordered a pizza to eat at home by myself, which I thought was a perfectly normal thing to do. And when the pizza arrived, I was on the phone with a friend who heard the doorbell and I said, oh, I'm getting a pizza. And he said, you're getting a pizza to eat alone. And I said, yes, you're not invited. And he said, fine, fine, but I dare you when you take the pizza to look over your shoulder and yell, guys, the pizza's here. And I said, okay. And so I went and I got the pizza from the man and I gave him his tip. And as I was giving him his tip, I looked over my shoulder and I was like, hey, guys, pizza's here. And then when I looked back at the pizza man, he just looked at me and he was like, don't do that. And then I was embarrassed. Am I wrong for telling my ex to stop giving my daughter lunch money? I have a daughter, Emily, 16 female, with my ex. She chose to live with my ex and his wife and kids the majority of the time because she has to share her room with her stepsister, Laura, 15, at my house. My ex gives Emily $25 a week to buy lunch. Emily's in Laura's school is down the street from a lot of restaurants, so instead of buying school lunches, she leaves campus to buy herself and her friends lunch. Okay, I don't see the problem here. The problem is, <laughs> the problem is she sees Laura at school and won't get her anything even though she gets her friends lunch all the time. Why should she do that? I talked to Emily about it and she said it's because her friends pay her back and Laura can't. Valid point, I agree. Emily knows we can't afford to give Laura that kind of money and I know she works part-time and gets an extra allowance from her dad so I asked her to occasionally buy Laura lunch to make her feel better. She refused. I called her dad and hoped that as a parent he'd understand what I was trying to do but he said Laura's feelings are not his or Emily's responsibility and that if she wants to buy lunch off campus she should get a part-time job like Emily. Facts.